Hey guys, how's it going? It's your boy LeBron James. LeBron James. Hope your day is going amazing. Uh, today we're doing the Resident Evil 4 Iceberg. For anybody that doesn't know what an iceberg is, have you been on YouTube for the past year? It's everywhere. Everybody's doing them. An iceberg is, for people that don't know, is a multi-layer thing that explains theories or something about a certain topic based on most known to least known. From the top tier to the bottom tier of the iceberg. Normally about has about five or six, seven layers. This one has six. Like a normal iceberg, we'll be starting from the top, going down to the bottom to the least known things, starting at the most known things. Go ahead and leave a like, sub if you're new around here, and let's go ahead and get down into this iceberg. Resident Evil 4. Alright, so starting from the very top at tier one, it's the bottle caps. Now the bottle caps are something that you earn from the merchant after doing some of his shooting range challenges. Now they range from different things, like different uh Ganados and certain things that are in the game, such as a chainsaw guy, uh, some of the bosses, things like that. That's why it's at the top of the iceberg, because it's pretty well known. A lot of people have gotten a lot of them. I, I myself had a good bit of them. Now let's go to the next one in this tier. The Infinite Rocket Launcher. For everybody that doesn't know, it's the infinite version of the regular rocket launcher, but you unlock it after beating the game and then buying it for 1 million pesetas. This is the most OP weapon of probably the entire game, considering it's a rocket launcher that's infinite. Since you beat the game, I guess it's kind of a good reward for it. But still, one of the most known things I would say when it comes to any Resident Evil game is unlocking some sort of infinite thing after you've beaten the game. So let's go to the next one in the tier. The Matilda. Now, the Matilda is in Resident Evil 4 after you beat the game initially, just like the rocket launcher. But the difference is that this is a reference to the RE2 pistol that Leon uses, called the Matilda. But the Resident Evil 2 version has to be fully upgraded first to get the name Matilda. But that's where this originally comes from, but now you can unlock the gun in RE4 after beating the game one time. Still relatively known, so let's go on to the next one. The Chicago Typewriter. You unlock this by beating in separate ways, which is a different campaign you could play through as Ada. It also costs 1 million pesetas, just like the Infinite Rocket Launcher does, but this one's so cool, and it has a secret reload animation, which I'll show here. Huh. It's such a great animation if you have a special 2 costume, and overall, I love this so much, but still pretty known, so let's go to the next one. The hand cannon. Now this is something that I never got because you have to get all five stars on all stages with all characters in the mercenaries mode. Now I never really played the mercenaries mode so I never got far in it but the hand cannon's OP and it one shots everything so I guess it's kind of worth the time but for me eh, it's still pretty well known as far as Resident Evil's concerned so let's go to the next one. This is something I just referenced uh, earlier but the special two costumes. You get this by beating separate ways which is the additional campaign that Ada has. This also pairs, like I showed earlier, with the Chicago typewriter. Leon's in a full suit with a hat, and then Ashley's in a full set of armor. Now, there's really not a whole lot changed on Leon. His knife's a little different. His costume overall is different. But the biggest change is to Ashley. Ashley's in a full suit of armor. This protects her from all damage, your bullets, enemies throwing things, everything along those lines. And as well, she can't get picked up. If she gets picked up, she instantly gets dropped because she's too heavy. So definitely worth the time. Also, still pretty relatively known, so let's get on to the next one, and the last one in this tier. The PRL. This is the Plaga Removal Laser. You unlock this by beating Professional in Resident Evil 4, and it's a laser that you shoot and will kill everybody that you see in that one area. It one-shots everything, except for a few bosses. Overall, if you beat the game on Professional, you kind of deserve something pretty cool, so I guess this kind of works. I never got it. I never thought it was useful. Uh, the Chicago Typewriter already has infinite ammo. You can spray it everywhere, and it's pretty much one-shot anyways. So I was okay with not getting it, so I'm going to go on to the next one. And this is the next tier, tier 2. We're going to get a little weirder, a little more unknown. Let's get on to the next tier. Starting off at tier 2, the Ditman glitch. Or better known as the Striker glitch. Now this is a glitch where you would take the Striker, you'd have it equipped, you would go to aim it, but before the laser came up, you'd pause and switch weapons. And whatever you switched to at that point would make you be able to run at 1.5 the normal speed. Made it a lot better for speedrunners because speedrunners would go after a certain time and now they can do 1.5 faster than they normally could. And just for a little bit of context, I'll show you a video here that's going to be of what happens when you do this glitch. Now that's the Dipman glitch, now let's get on to the next part. The Ashley Panties Easter Egg. Sounds exactly like what do you think it is. Now there's a little Easter Egg in the game that not a lot of people know about that if you were to get Ashley on top of a ladder or somewhere up above you you can take a sniper rifle or really any weapon and aim it underneath to look at her panties and she'll close her legs and call you a pervert I'll put a video of that right here oh you pervert hey what are you looking at 
Now, not a lot of people knew about this, uh, but it's definitely a funny Easter egg that uh, I'm happy the developers thought about and they put it in the game. <laughs> now, on to the next one. Knife only runs. There's some crazy people out there that have tried to beat this game with just a knife, and I think it's crazy. But it's here on this list because not a lot of people know that it's possible, and not a lot of people have tried it. So that's why it's here on this tier of the iceberg. Now, time for the next one. RE4 Chainsaw GameCube Controller. Now, this is something I didn't know existed until I looked up, but it looks awesome. Um, it's a limited edition controller that came out with a GameCube version of RE4, and it just doesn't look like it functioned very well, but it, it looks cool as hell. But it's here on this tier because nobody really knew it existed, and uh, I didn't really either. On to the next one. The fence glitch. Now, this is a glitch that you can do at the farm area where you go to jump over a fence, which I'll show a video of now. And what that would do is you can go in the back and you can grab a bunch of items, a bunch of uh, pendants, a bunch of herbs, a bunch of assets that are put into the map as needed that are just hidden out there on the outside. This is a very common thing in a lot of games, but uh, I didn't know this existed until I looked it up as well. Overall, pretty good glitch to get you a little bit ahead in the early game, but uh, let's go to the next tier. Even weirder and more unknown things. Tier 3. Censored versions. Now, there's a lot of censored versions that have been released in other countries. Uh, Japan, and specifically, they took away dismemberment to where it's just their head stays on, uh, which I think is pretty wild because it's one of the scariest parts of that game was when I got killed by a chainsaw guy cutting my head off. But... In the Japan version, it's not there, and it's kind of upsetting, but that's not even the least of all of the uncensored versions. The craziest censored one is Germany's. Now, in Germany's edition, they took away all of the side things that aren't Leon's main campaign. So you can't play separate ways, you can't play mercenaries. Now, the reason they took it out of the game is they said it's senseless violence, and it's glorifying violence by doing something that doesn't have to do with the storyline. I think it's kind of weird, because separate ways has to do with the story. It's a censored version, and it's at this tier because not a lot of people knew there were censored versions of RE4, and just at what extent they censored them to. But on to the next one. Now, this one is really creepy. Uh, it's the uncomfortable regenerator breathing. I guess it's here because not a lot of people heard it before or just don't want to hear it. I myself didn't want to hear it. I had to get it for this video or I would have never wanted to listen to it again in my lifetime. But here it is. I hope you don't hate listening to it as much as I do. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry you had to see that. Now on to the next one. The Krauser Knife Strap. Now, anybody that's played Resident Evil 4 know that there's a boss battle with Krauser later in the game where you have to get two pieces that you need to get through a door, but he's guarding one of them at the very top of a tower. Now, normal people would just shoot him over and over again, do his quick time events to get away from him, things like that, but apparently there's a strat that nobody knew existed for a while where you can just literally knife him, do like five or six knives and he's dead. That easy. But this is here because I didn't even know this. I've beaten this game over and over and over again. Never thought once to try to knife Krauser. But apparently others have, and that's why it's here. Now on to the next one. The RE4 mobile port. For those that didn't know, RE4 had a mobile port? Don't know why, and uh, here's a picture of it to show you how weird this looks. Now, I guess I give them an E for effort, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't want to play the mobile port of RE4. <laughs> But it's here because no one knew it existed, and I sure as hell didn't either. Now on to the last one of this tier, and that's going to be running straight in the laser room. Apparently at the laser room section of RE4, where you're supposed to just go through certain sections and not get hit, and then do some quick time events, you can just walk straight through all the way towards the end. Do like one quick time event and be done with it. Now, this is a wild thing that I didn't know existed either, and it's going to change every RE4 playthrough I do from here on out. Now, on to the next tier. Tier 4. We're going to start this off with the Labyrinth Skip Glitch. I didn't know this glitch really existed. I saw a lot of people talking on Reddit about it, but I wasn't sure how it happened, because I couldn't find a video of anybody doing it. But from what I understand, you can skip the entire section of the Labyrinth that is in the castle by just having a TMP with a stock on it and using some sort of door glitch. I don't know what it is exactly, but I know it existed. I saw a video of a guy that went to the door that was for the labyrinth and then somehow glitched on the other side. He didn't do anything different. He just opened the door and he was on the other side of the door. 
but it's here because no one really knew it existed um and i didn't really know it can happen and i still don't know how to do it but i know it's somewhere all right now on to the next one the leon jacket on a ganado in separate ways for those of you who don't know in a separate race section where you play as ada you can find a, a ganado that's wearing leon's jacket now a lot of people knew this because it's really really easy to just gloss over and not see but yeah leon loses his jacket in the beginning of the game uh right after you meet big cheese you get knocked out and you wake up without your jacket on and you just move on from there no one really pays attention to it being gone but he doesn't have it the entire time and i guess we kind of get a little bit of closure of where it went when ada finds it in separate ways no one really cared where leon's jacket went so i guess that's why it's here no one really knew it happened now on to the next one now i didn't really know that this was a thing and i couldn't find it anywhere on the internet so if anybody can actually find it and send it to me or put it in the comments or something along those lines it's the re4 flyer in re3 now like i said i couldn't find anything about this but apparently there was an re4 flyer like showing about what the game was in re3 so way before re4 was made and it's not really something that i can believe because it just didn't seem like they'd prepared that far ahead for resident Evil 4 especially since all the things that you didn't know about re4 uh it went through development hell so like the game changed multiple times so i don't see how re3 could have had a flyer depicting what was re4 when they didn't even know what was in re4 at that time but it's here because nobody knew it existed all right now on to the next one ashley suplex glitch now this is a glitch where when you play as ashley when you're in the castle section apparently there's some way to suplex the ganados which is really wild and really funny to see because leon can do it normally in the base game but as ashley all you can do is throw lamps or run away but the glitch is by hitting a Ganado with a door, get him on his knees, and then be able to use that to suplex him as Ashley. Now, here's a video of it here. I thought it looked really funny, and I didn't even know it can be a thing, so that's why it's here. So that was the last of this tier. Now, let's get on to tier 5. All right, now, the first one in tier 5, um, this one is really weird, and it's only going to get weirder from here, but... The Secret Guy Easter Egg in Chapter 5-4. After the death of Mike in the helicopter, Mike! Rip Mike. I love you, Mike. But after his death, you can look off in the distance with a sniper scope, or people that have done it in YouTube where they've gone out of bounds. In the far right section, you can see somebody standing there with a jacket on, and it wasn't discovered for a long time. It kind of reminds me of the Halo 3 guy that's in, uh, in the campaign. But this wasn't found for a long time, and it's really low in the Easter egg because nobody knows it existed, and only a few people have ever seen it. On to the next one. Playing as Wesker in the main game. So apparently there's a glitch that you can play as Wesker without any mods, just by going into the mercenary mode, choosing Wesker as a character, before you start the stage, leaving and starting the main campaign on a new game. Now this has some weird implications, a lot of weird things you can't do. You can't knife, and you can't break crates, you can't do certain quick time events without it breaking the game fully. You can't even open the inventory but overall it has a weird look and it's a weird glitch and i don't really know why you want to do it but it's down here because nobody really does now on to the next one now this is one of my favorites this is that every enemy in the game can be killed by a door yep you heard me right every enemy in re4 can be killed with a door that sounds exactly like what it sounds like every enemy in the game you can smash a door on multiple times and it does a little bit of damage but it does just enough over time to where if you did it a hundred times on any enemy it would kill them so that's like that's so crazy to me that you can kill every enemy in the game and that was thought up enough that is damage for every door swing that you do but it's down here on this list because nobody really knew you can do this and i don't really know who'd be crazy enough to try to kill anybody with a door now the last one on tier five is relative difficulty Anybody that plays new Resident Evil games will know that this existed. In RE2 Remake, there's an adaptive difficulty thing where, based on how you do, things change in the game. And this was in RE4, and no one ever talked about it. Capcom never talked about how it was in the game. But the way relative difficulty works in RE4 is based on how good you do, whether ammo drops, whether enemies are more aggressive, more enemies in certain areas. That's all how relative difficulty works in RE4. But it's here on this list because nobody knew it was really there, and... Nobody has admitted that it was there, but we can obviously tell it's there in some form or fashion. Now that was the last one. Now time to get into the last tier of the RE4 Iceberg. Now things at the bottom here, I didn't even know existed. I had to look them up to find out if they even existed in the first place. Um, so let's start off with the first one. R702 and R334. Now these were maps that were in the RE4 files that never really were put anywhere in the game. 
And there's videos online of these people going into the files and finding these. And they look really weird, but also like they can fit into the game pretty well. One of them looks like it's part of the castle that would be extended from the castle section. And the other one looks like it's from RE5 in the desert. I really would have loved to have seen these actually put in the game. But at the same time, they also could have been early adaptions of some of the places we already see in the game anyways. But they're on this tier because no one knew they were there. And unless you went into the files, you wouldn't have known they were there either. Overall, pretty cool, and it deserves its spot right here, and definitely a good start to the last tier. Now the next one, the Chicago Typewriter Ammo Box. Now apparently this was in the files that there was going to be an ammo box for the Chicago Typewriter. If you remember what I said earlier, there was a Chicago Typewriter that you unlocked after beating the Separate Ways part of Ada's campaign. But this applies that somewhere in the development cycle, they decided they were going to have the Chicago Typewriter as a base gun that you could unlock, and this is ammo that you would find across the world. Overall, the box looks really cool, and I'm kind of happy they didn't put it in, though. So I think the Chicago Typewriter being infinite ammo and getting unlocked after the separate ways just kind of worked really well. The gun's just so fun to play with, I couldn't imagine going around having to find ammo for it and not being able to spray it infinitely for fun. But it does exist, and that's why it's on this tier, and I never knew it existed, and um, I'm kind of happy it never did. <laughs> now, this is the last one on the entire iceberg, and it's more of a theory than something that exists, but something really interesting to think about is, and I can make an entire video just on this subject by itself, but it's the merchant not existing. Now, right off the bat, that sounds kind of weird, but the more you think about it, the more it makes sense. The character's never explained. It's never explained why he's there, who he is, why he sells weapons, and there's just a lot of like weird loopholes in his story throughout the entire time that you meet him that really kind of leave me to believe that he is just some sort of ghost or non-existing being that Delian just thinks he's there when he's really not. Now, things that could support this theory are, like here, his eyes change color throughout the playthrough. One time you'll see him with normal eyes, the next you'll see him with bright red eyes, like the regular Granados, and it just doesn't make any sense. Not to mention, if he did exist, and he was real, because the Granados hate you so much, why would they be letting him sell stuff to you, so that way you can kill them with it? Overall, it's a really weird theory, but it makes sense if you really look into it, and I'm happy it's the last one on this iceberg, because it really works out to be one of the weirdest and least known theories of the entire iceberg but all right guys that's a quick iceberg of resident evil 4 i hope you guys enjoyed it uh like i said earlier go and leave a like comment subscribe if you're new around here and i appreciate you guys making it to the end of the video and i'll see you guys in the next one